everyone this is Draco Evo back yet again with another Manchester United video it's been a while I have to admit it's been a really long time that I've done a big big video like this or a pre-recorded video like this and it's nice to be back in the group I was very busy with work etc etc so I'll be I've been actually doing some YouTube shorts you know quick fire videos that you can browse through on your phone so do go and check them out if you get a chance it will only the playlist will only appear on your phone app but anyway Southampton versus Manchester United in the Premier League match preview we're going to be talking about the usual things my predicted lineup predicted scoreline bit of run socials press conference reaction but let's jump straight in this this is the formation I expect Oli to play this is the team I expect Oli to play I'm going for like a 4-5-1-4-3-3 formation you know whatever you want to call it Back four, pretty much I kept the same. Tellez being there instead of Luke Shaw. Lindelof, Maguire, Juan Bissaka and David De Gea. Tellez for me has to start. He has been extremely impressive every time he donned the United top. His attacking play has been immense. And he, you can see he's one of the best left backs in the world right now. And we've got him for cheap, which is fantastic, you know, because of his contractual situation. But he is someone that can provide a bit of a different approach in our left side to someone like, say, Luke Shaw, who uh, I feel Luke Shaw is probably defensively better. But offensively, Tellez is 100% 10 times better than Luke Shaw. His set please play is excellent. His maturity, his experience, he is he's an all-round package for a left back. What you expect? to be sort of like a left back wing back attacking sort of player this is what i went through midfield a bit of a uh, obviously a dilemma you know but i opted for this midfield i was thinking instead of fred there might be mattish in there but i think fred with his mobility and the form that he has been on and the fact that he's been rested every now and then and he's been used very cleverly by Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, I think he will definitely start as sort of like a shield between the midfield uh, for, uh, between the defense and the midfield right um, Bruno and Donny van der Beek will definitely start in the midfield because I reckon, you know, Paul Pogba is out. It has been confirmed, which we'll go through it. But I expect Donny van der Beek, who's been, again, impressive. Any, every time he plays the game, his simplistic way of approach to things, his his passing ability, his his work rate, his attitude, his cleverness. I think he's, he's a top, top quality player. And I expect him to start every single time either Bruno Fernandes or Paul Pogba gets injured. I do feel that in this current stage that if... If Paul Pogba is fit and can start, I think Donny van der Beek will be dropped to the bench. That's my feeling. Unfortunately, there's been a lot of divide in regards to that. But Bruno and Donny van der Beek will start. We'll get back to Bruno a bit. Up front, I went for a bit of a change. So I'm a, I'm a fan of Cavani, right? Because he's a traditional number nine. He gives you a bit of something else that Martial cannot, cannot give. I always felt that Martial as a number nine is not good enough. I always felt that him playing off the main striker it will, will be able to get better out of him him playing on the wings cutting in much like what we've seen um, in, in, in his first year at United where he's like an inside forward sort of thing I expect him to play on the right side cutting in that would be nice and Rashford obviously on the left side and Cavani up front who, which will be the focal point creating space bit of a threat in the air especially when crosses from Lin, um, Teles coming in it would be fantastic to see but for me personally Anthony Martial I think it's come to a stage and I, I, he has played a bit of around that in the last few games where he's switched to that side or the wing side. He kind of gets the best out of him because a number nine that can turn around and dribble and have that space is not as effective as an inside forward or a winger who can turn around and dribble. He's got a lot more space to dribble into. He's got a lot more, um, you know, dribbling in and pulling out defenders towards him will create a lot more options and spaces from for people in front of him. When he's, whereas when he's a number nine, he cannot really do that. He can turn around and dribble in, but him dragging at defenders means that he's the only one up front that cannot kind of pick a pass, You can, if you know what I mean. Whereas him playing like a level just below the actual front, he can create that space. And that's what I feel Martial is strongest at. And I, I do believe that Martial has a contractual ag agreement that he should be the number nine. But it is what it is. I think this is... I would like to see this team, although I do have a sneaky feeling that we're going to go for a 2 CDM. I don't want to go for a 2 CDM. The reason why, we've seen it, how it is. Uh, let me just go to the table. We've seen how it is when it comes to playing from the front. I mean, the midweek game against Istanbul, we absolutely destroyed that team because we played from the front. I think playing with 2 CDM and protecting this, 
centre backs because we don't trust them, etc., etc. Is not the way that we should approach game. I think offensively we are we are such a powerhouse, and if we play like that in in the week weekday, we can knock out Southampton, who are pretty strong. You can say uh, we can knock out Southampton in the first few first half maybe, and then begin to kind of you know double down and kind of be more cautious, right? This was my predicted lineup let me know your thoughts in the comments below guys i will really appreciate it um this is the table currently as it stands as you can see a latest table we played eight games we are 13th in the league having played five games our last two games in the premier league we have one which is fantastic however looking on the other side southampton who are currently in fifth position in five games they have not lost a single game it's a tough, tough place to go. I mean, you, you can see by the stats, they are not a very easy team to play against. However, one thing I did do think that that will have a heavy impact is, is the missing Danny Ings, the leader, the talisman, the one that gets you goals. is Danny Ings. And Danny Ings is out injured for a while now. Um, he is set to miss out tomorrow's game against Manchester United. And I think that will be a big miss. And I think we could take advantage of that. Whatever way you see it, Danny Ings or not Danny Ings, this is a must-win game for Manchester United. Given the fact that how we have started in the Premier League, you know anything but a win is going to be a step in the wrong direction. This is our position after eight games. 13th in the league, which is not good enough. A lot of the teams are starting to pull ahead. We're starting to get a bit of a bit of a vision on 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 the table you know most of the teams some of the teams have played 10 games i always judge the season after 10 games where you can kind of kind of see where the season is heading but with the likes of liverpool dropping points spurs still yet to play chelsea leicester they're still yet to play we are a couple of games behind them man city not looking great either i think this is the time where we need to go on to the front foot and we need to get a bit of a run going keep that momentum going right guys like we've won the last few games on the trot which is fantastic some of the results were brilliant the performances were brilliant we just need to kind of build upon it and take it through this december period coming up is going to be so so important we've got tough tough fixtures coming up. i mean we straight after that we got psg you know we got tough fixtures coming up no respite we need to kick on there is no excuses anymore. There is no excuses of we didn't have a preseason, this, that. No excuses. Our injury record, apart from Paul Pogba, is pretty, pretty good this season so far, especially last few games. We have a near enough full squad to choose from. We've got strength in depth, especially in the midfield area. There is no excuse. Yes, Southampton are sitting pretty at the fifth position, but they are a team that we can definitely, with our quality, I expect them to... I expect us to kind of brush them over. But then again, we've seen some of the results go against us. We've seen some of the performances that we've seen. Um, it's not good enough. And I think we need to do, do much, much better in the Premier League. The boys need to do much, much, much better in the Premier League. It's not as if they are youngsters or they're coming in. They are seasoned professional. They are experienced players, 25, 26, 27 year olds who's played a lot of games. They must do much, much better. Talking about Bruno Fernandes, or well, much better. Let's talk about Bruno Fernandes. So Solskjaer came out and likened Bruno Fernandes to Cristiano Ronaldo. So this is what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer had to say in the press conference. Bruno has that presence like Ronaldo and an influence and an impact on his teammates you just need to look at the results we've had since he's come in he's got loads of energy he's got leadership he's he's a team player which is the key now for us going forward some players will have to sit games out and rest i wasn't looking forward to telling bruno when he was rested against leipzig but it was absolutely no problem same with marcus to be fair they know this season will be challenging and this is how we build this team and the culture of the team that's it about the team and not the individuals fantastic i like i like what um oligan social said about there it's about the team not all about individuals the individuals will drive you away from the club will make you lose the job and we've seen that before in the past few years be about the team now i think bruno has proven that and over and over and that is the team before i pogba and mctonney obviously being there they're gonna miss the trip um i think Solskjaer came out and said something about scott and paul pogba didn't train this morning they weren't on the grass they look very unlikely for the weekend so we've got a couple of injuries um and a bit of a fitness uh, um, update on Rashford, Lindelof and Juan Bissaka. Uh, Marcus, Aaron and um, Lindelof should be 
okay, but not 100% sure. I started rehab on the grass, not with the squad. So a couple of players missing, but we still have a strong enough squad to go in. Um, regarding Bruno Fernandes, I, look, I totally agree with what Oligan Solskjaer has said, that Bruno Fernandes has had an impact like a Cristiano Ronaldo. His drive, his mentality, his his individual brilliance, and, you know, the, the sheer desire to win the damn game. This is what Bruno Fernandes is. And, and I, I found it absolutely baffling that some of our own fans are turning against Bruno Fernandes. There's a stat that I read up there, right? Bruno Fernandes, let me just scroll up for you guys. Bruno Fernandes has had an electric start to life at Manchester United, registered, registering 30, 34 goal involvements in his th first 35 games for, for the club in all competition. That's, that's 34 goal invo involvements in 35 games. That's not including goals, that's involvements. He is one person that is absolutely must be our leader, must be our captain in the future. I don't rate Harry Maguire being our captain. That's my opinion. That's honesty. You know, he's, he might be a good defender, blah, blah, blah. I don't think he has the captain's material. I see Bruno Fernandes more of a captain. I think he's, an, he's, an, he's the leader. He's, he's the actual leader of the squad. I mean, every, every Tom, Dick and Harry can see that. If you, if you watch remotely any of Manchester United games, right? If you follow Manchester United day in, day out like I do, you clearly see Bruno Fernandes, some of the way he comes out, defends him and talks about the team, giving goals away, assists, etc. It's absolutely brilliant. And it baffles me that people actually come out and say Bruno Fernandes is not good enough. He should be dropped, blah, blah, blah. Without Bruno Fernandes, we will not be <laughs> where we are, where we were last season. You know, he single-handedly dragged us to third position last season. And he only came out in January, right? He was a player of this year last season and he only came in on January, right? Without him... I don't know where we will be and social coming out full of praise of Bruno Fernandes I 100% agree with that look tomorrow is a big game it is a lunchtime kickoff um well late lunch kickoff 2 p.m kickoff so I'll be sitting down watching the game I hope I hope we get a big result I do feel I do feel it's going to be a draw right I, I do think it's going to be 1-1 because Southampton they're in a good streak again it's going to be a tough away game you know in the head-to-head um, we've drawn a lot of the games. If we, if I scroll back down, you guys can see the last few games where we were with them. The last two games against Southampton, we have drawn 1-1 one, one and 2-2, two, two, right? Last time we beat them was 3-2 in 2019, March, about a year and a half ago. But before that, there was another 2-2 two, two draw, another 0-0, 1-0. Nil, nil, nil. It was up to 2017, you can see, there was only one goal in it. And beyond that, it was either United winning by one goal margin which is very light, very thin, or, or a draw. And I think it's going to be a tough game. I think it's going to be a 1-1 one, one result. I, I don't think we're going to see a stalemate. Although I want us to win, but that's my prediction. Anyways, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know what is your prediction for the game. And let's see who's, who's right. We'll have a bit of a discussion, discussion. Southampton versus Man United match preview. As always, guys, I'll catch you guys in the next upload and stay fun.